Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about porting and polishing. So I have a cylinder head right here, and I also have an intake manifold. Now, they're both made out of cast aluminum. So I'm gonna be talking about two different kinds of fuel systems and how porting and polishing will benefit or negatively affect either system. There's going to be pros and cons to porting and polishing, but it depends on what kind of system you're working with. So in today's video, we're gonna be addressing all of that. So what you're looking at right here is a cylinder head along with an intake manifold. Now, porting and polishing refers to increasing the size along with making the finish of each one of the ports better. So by porting each one of these ports, you're going to be making the size of them larger, which in theory means you'll be able to flow more air through that little hole. Now, when you're polishing something, you're going to be removing the small imperfections that are found in the castings. So whether it be found on the intake or whether it be found on the cylinder head, there's going to be imperfections found on each one of the ports from when it was casted. So more often than not, most companies will make a part just to get you by. So they're going to do a pretty good job, but it's not going to be the best possible finish or the best possible design because that's where it starts costing more money. So once you have either your intake manifold removed or even your cylinder head removed, you can make each one of these flow and operate a lot better while costing you basically nothing. So before we even consider to look at the ports for either the intake manifold or the cylinder head, we're first going to be talking about the different kind of fuel system and how that will actually affect your porting and polishing procedure. So right here I have a whiteboard with a pretty terrible drawing of uh, a cutaway of an engine. So right here we're going to be talking about port fuel injection and this one here is a direct fuel injection system. So these two work in similar ways, but they're kind of different. So we're gonna first talk about this one. So this is a port cylinder. So we have our connecting rod, our piston. This is our block down here, all this. This is the cylinder head. And in the cylinder head, you're gonna have your exhaust valve, your spark plug, and your intake valve. Now, in a port injection system, you're going to have a fuel injector that's going to be spraying fuel behind the valve. So this is the intake, this is all intake, and this is the intake valve. It's going to be sprayed and the fuel is going to be atomized and it's going to hit the walls, it's going to hit everything in the center, it's gonna flow in here, and it's also going to hit the backside of the valve. Now, the design of this is pretty simple. This is how most cars were made, and even cars nowadays are still being made in this system. The benefits of this system are that the fuel is always going to be cleaning and hitting the backside of the valve. So you're not going to get much carbon buildup found on this system. Now this system that you're seeing right here is like what I have on my Honda. It is a port fuel injection system and you're not going to ever have to worry about much carbon buildup because that gas, which is a solvent, is always going to be cleaning and spraying down everything in this section. Now if we move to the direct injection side, so we have the same kind of design, we have our connecting rod, our piston, our block, our cylinder head, and in the cylinder head, we're going to have the fuel injector, which is a part of it, as opposed to the fuel injector, which is typically found in the intake manifold. So we still have the same exhaust, spark plug, and intake valves right here, but the difference is that in the direct injection fuel system, the fuel injector is spraying fuel directly into the combustion chamber. So it never hits the intake valves. So that means that any oil or anything that's going to be recirculating past the PCV or the EGR system is not going to be getting cleaned off from the fuel. So that means that any oil that we're seeing in here is going to build up and that's going to cause carbon. And that is why my Mini Cooper engine is so notorious for that problem. Now this kind of design is much more efficient, you're going to get better fuel economy, there are many perks to this system, but one of the drawbacks and one of the things to note is that when you're porting and polishing your intake runners in the cylinder head, along with porting and polishing the intake manifold, you can port and polish this to a mirror finish and be perfectly okay with that. You cannot however do that with a port injection system. So the fuel and the air is going to atomize a lot better in a port injection system when it's mixed together with a finish that is somewhat rough. So it can be ported, it can be polished, but not to the extent that you're going to have a mirror finish. On a direct injection fuel system, you can have everything up in here fully polished and ported to a mirror finish. Now the reason why we can have that is because we don't have the fuel and the air being atomized and mixed together um, pre-intake valve. 
So everything up in here, we can have it so that's super shiny and the air is gonna flow extremely well and extremely fast. The smoother the sides of the cylinder head, along with the smoother the valve, the faster and more flow we can get into our combustion chamber. So we should then be able to see a higher CFM rate by porting and polishing the intake on the direct injection fuel system engine. The port injection system, let's say right here is where the fuel injector is spraying the air and that's where the air and the fuel is being mixed. So we can port and polish everything before this. So we can have it so it's a mirror finish up to this point. As soon as you see that fuel injector, you're going to see a better result by not porting and polishing past here to a mirror finish. You can still polish it to the point that it's kind of like a, a brushed aluminum kind of look, but you don't want to have it so that you can see a direct mirror finish. That is where you're going to be losing power. If you have a somewhat unfinished or rough surface, the fuel is going to tumble inside the intake runner a lot better and you're gonna have a better dispersion of all the fuel and air. Now another area that a lot of people talk about when they go to port and polish either their head or their intake manifold is what they refer to as gasket matching. Now a lot of people say, hey, if you clean up and you make the actual hole of each one of the ports a little bit bigger, you can flow more air because the intake is one size, let's say it's this big, and I'm just gonna over exaggerate this, but the, uh, the cylinder head is going to be a smaller size. So if you can enlarge in that and you can match it, you should in theory make more power. That is definitely true. If you have a large orifice that leads to a smaller one, you're going to be able to flow more if you make that smaller hole a little bit larger. Now that's all great in theory, but the thing is when you go and actually try to do that and you apply that to your parts themselves, there's one little problem that happens. So right here we have the intake side of the cylinder head along with the intake that's for this vehicle. So we're gonna see if the size of this port is any smaller than the size of the port for the intake. So it doesn't matter which port you pick to measure, they all should in theory be the exact same. So I'm gonna be using a little reader like this to measure it up. I'm gonna zero it out. And then I'm gonna measure both the width and the height of each one of these ports. So if we look at the width, it's 46 millimeters. Now if we look at the height, we can see it's 24 and a half millimeters. So we're gonna compare those numbers to the intake, and if this is a lot smaller, or even smaller by any means uh, compared to the intake, what in theory we should be doing is enlarging this port so that we'll be able to flow more air. So for the intake, let's measure the width. And you see that's 45 millimeters, 45 and a half. And if we measure the height, we can see that we're at 25. So with those measurements, what we should be doing is just slightly enlarging the height of each one of the ports on the cylinder head, but as for the width, everything is okay. The misconception comes from when they see that there's a little bit of a black ring around the outside of each one of the ports. They think that, oh, the intake is a lot bigger, and if we take off, let's say, that half a centimeter of material found on each one of the ports, they think you will be able to get more power. But the thing is, is that the gasket itself seals up to here, on the outside part, but the inside diameter of the intake manifold itself is pretty much the exact same size as this port. So you're not really gonna see that much of a difference when you're making it this larger. Now obviously you can take your own measurements for your engine and you might see different results, but for this motor, you're not gonna see a huge difference if you're making this any wider, but if we make the height a little bit larger and we remove the imperfections from the hard castings found in here, we'll be able to make the air and everything flow a lot better, especially because this is a direct injection motor and the fuel injector ports are down in here. So what we're looking at here are the ports that are leading for the intake side going directly into each one of the combustion chambers. So by looking at this cylinder head, you can see that this is made out of cast aluminum. That's why when you remove these irregularities and imperfections, you see more power. The air that's entering in your intake manifold is going to get to each one of your cylinders much faster, much smoother, with less turbulence once you remove all these imperfections. Those irregularities can be seen throughout the entire bore of each one of these runners. So if we want to get a closer look, we can see how disgusting all this is. You can see that there's the little castings that are found in the entire port. So it doesn't matter if we're working up at the front or down in there right by the valves. You can see that there is those irregularities and like little peaks that we need to sand down and trim down so that all that air can get right into our cylinders instead of being slowed down by all those little bumps.
The same thing can be seen with the cylinder head flipped upside down. So if we go to take a closer look, you can see that there's the imperfections found in each one of the intakes. You can see that there's the irregularities in the casting for each one of the combustion chambers down in here. And then if we were to clean up all the exhaust ports, we would see the same kind of thing. But I'm gonna first be sandblasting the entire head and cleaning this up so that all this carbon and all this dirt is going to be gone. At that point, all that we're going to see is the imperfections and the roughness of the metal alone. Now you can go ahead and sandblast, you can get this hot tanked, you can go by any means of cleaning this up. But I'm just gonna be going with a sandblasting rope because it's a lot faster and it's a lot more effective at breaking down all the surface imperfections and the dirt that's on there. So all the carbon, all the oil, all the soot is all going to be removed and then all that we're gonna see at that point is the roughness, the casting marks, the ridges, and everything else. But that is how you'd properly port and polish a cylinder head. You're gonna be removing each one of those peaks and you're gonna make each one of the velocities of everything coming through the intake and exhaust a lot faster. So before I finish this video, I just want to do a quick overview of what we talked about. So the difference as to when you would want to port, polish, or even do both depends on the application. If you are running a port injection system, you would only want to port and polish up to this point. And by porting, I mean you would definitely first want to measure each one of your ports for your intake manifold and your cylinder head. If the measurements for your intake manifold are larger than the cylinder head, you don't need to port at all. You're not going to see any advantage. Now, if your intake manifold is made out of plastic, there's no option for you. If the intake manifold is made out of aluminum, you can port that, and then at that point, you might be able to port this and gain some extra power. But you're gonna be going for a full port and polish up till this point, and then past the fuel injector, the only thing you're gonna to wanna to do is polish. Now, you're not gonna go for a mirror finish, you're going to wanna look for a brushed finish. So at that point, the fuel in the air can tumble and it's gonna be able to go into the combustion chamber at a faster rate and you're gonna see more power. If you're running a direct injection system, you can port and polish everything up till here. So everything on the intake manifold, if it's made out of aluminum, you can port and polish that. And the same thing goes for this. Now because my Mini Cooper has a plastic intake manifold, porting the intake runners is not really going to give me that much of a gain, if any gain whatsoever. However, getting rid of those little imperfections and the bumps on the castings for the runners is indeed going to give me a performance gain because the less amount of turbulence that's in here, the better. And a fully polished, mirror finished intake runner is going to have less friction and it's going to slow down the air much less than something that isn't. So at that point, I'm gonna to wanna to port and polish all the way up until here. And I'm gonna be going for a mirror finish. You still are going to see an advantage by getting a brushed finish, by removing each one of the peaks. But if you can make it shiny just like glass, the air isn't gonna to wanna to stick as much as it would inside of all of here. And at that point, you're gonna be able to make more power inside your combustion chamber. Now, as for the materials to do all this stuff, there are many different things that you can use to get you by. So all of these things that you see right here can be used to port and polish your manifold along with your runners. So you're gonna be using either a cordless drill, you can use a Dremel, you can use a die grinder that's either electric or pneumatic, you can use tungsten carbide bits, you can use sanding rolls. These are really helpful, especially getting in those really hard to reach areas, especially in each one of the ports for your cylinder head. You could use a polishing kit. You can use these little sanding wheels. These are really helpful, these are really handy. They also come in many different grits. Or even if you really want to, you can do it all by hand and you can use regular sandpaper. It all depends on what you want to do. Keep in mind, the better tools you have, the better of a finish you're going to get, along with the less amount of time you're going to be spending on this. So if you can use something that's electric to cut down some time, you're going to be maybe cutting this job down from let's say a day to a couple hours. It's going to make that much of a difference, especially because you have to repeat the exact same process for each one of the 16 ports that you have in your engine. So it really does make a difference if you've got some good tools. Now, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it makes it a lot easier when you have the right tools for the job. Now, if you guys wanna see the video on how to actually port and polish, you guys can check out the next video that's gonna be coming out in this series. If it's not out yet, stay tuned, give me a day or two, um, but it is gonna be out there. If you're watching this while that video is already uploaded, you're lucky, just stay to the end and click on that next video. But if you guys have any questions regarding the process, or even if you guys have any other tips and tricks, Throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help, have a read, and maybe even help you guys out maybe along your journey to do the same thing. Anyways guys, if you have any questions, throw them down there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.